the Bible reads, this is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved. No one has greater love than to lay down his own life for his friends. In reflection, perhaps even a greater love is one that will lay down his life for someone he doesn't even know. This monument is a symbol of that love, and it will live in perpetuity as a reminder of the compassion and the courage that is our firefighting profession. I've seen some remarkable things in my career, lives literally pulled back from the hands of God, I've seen the extraordinary courage from some extraordinary people. I have marveled as men and women of all walks of public safety have taken complex and horrific circumstances and in a matter of hours, days, weeks, and sometimes even years brought back normalcy to life. Each of these instances, I have been proud to be a part of the profession that we call firefighting. Today I stand before you at this moment in time and tell you that I've never been more proud to lead an organization or be a part of a department and a community as I am right now. What you need to know is that about, about this project is that six days ago, nothing stood in this place. Firefighters both on duty and off have been working around the clock to get this project complete. We also had a deputy sheriff, an EMS paramedic, New Hanover County firefighters, business owners of this community, tradesmen, and just plain citizens stop by and lend a hand. Without this steadfast commitment, this memorial would not have been possible. What, thank you. What you should also know is that two years ago, this project was just an idea. Many great and wonderful people that have already been introduced today have made many sacrifices required to raise the money for this project so that our department and also, so our department and community also honors and thanks each of them this day. One person who has given the most to our department and me personally is Miss Louise McCall. She's given countless hours to this project. She has given of her own personal wealth and sacrificed her own business to make the, and her own livelihood, I might add, to make this memorial a reality. All along, she was constantly keeping us on task and steadfast in a commitment that this would be a community effort. In a million years, I could not find a way to thank her for what she has done for me or this department. Ms. McCall, would you step up here, please? In our profession, we are called by our rank as a show of respect. So when my folks ask me what I'm doing, and I tell them that I have appointments with Ms. McCall, they say, you mean Chief McCall? Referencing her in this manner is because she does direct like a chief. I can attest to that. However, I think it is foremost because she is respected in the same way as the chief. Louise, as a token of our appreciation for all you have done for this department and our community, I would like to present you with this plaque. ceremoniously wrapped in a black apron. <laughs> this plaque reads, Louise McCall, thank you for your tireless dedication to the fallen heroes of the Wilmington Fire Department, September 11th, 2013. <laughs> now, I wanna keep her up here. Because we also have a frame print for Miss McCall. And I want you to know that she got a signed print, and it's number two. 
Not sure who got number one, but she got number two. I could not begin to thank all of the firefighters that gave of their time to make this memorial a reality, and I'm going to apologize in advance for that dilemma. I would, however, like for Chief Randy Burton, if you'd step forward, Captain Jack Jarvis, our construction coordinator, if you'd step forward, and Rodney Lester, our fundraising chairman for the internal committee, if you'd step forward. I would like to acknowledge these people as they stand here today because they have worked tirelessly I mean tirelessly to make this a reality, and I thank them personally from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank the two people in my life that keep me on schedule and on task. My wife, Sarah, that supports me to a fault in my career, and my assistant, Courtney Cromer, who has scheduled countless meetings, answered hundreds of phone calls, mitigated numerous conflicts, and reminds me constantly, if I don't leave now, I will be late for my next appointment. Today, we as Wilmington firefighters are proud to stand here and pay tribute to the seven men that lost their lives in this city and the 343 firefighters that lost their lives on 9-11. Mr. Mayor, in just a few minutes, it will be my honor to dedicate this memorial and it is with great pride that I hand it over to our council, the citizens of this community, and hope that it serves as a constant reminder of what it means to be a firefighter and work in one of the greatest, the greatest of all professions. In closing, I'd like to thank each of you for being here today. It means a lot that all, you had a hand in the completion of this memorial. God bless each of you, and please know that, as always, I'm proud to be your fire chief. And now I would like to introduce, and I, you know, I had comments that were written up there, but um, I, hope, I hope you know how much this uh, woman means to us in this department. We could not have done this without her, and I love her, Louise McCall. Thank you, Buddy. I um, did have the opportunity a couple of years ago to meet Buddy when he come to the office and said, I just want to ask you to do some fundraising. I said, well, that'll be fine. He said, well, it's $250,000. So I said, okay, and we did it. But I want to tell Buddy and Sarah how much they mean to me. We've grown in the, with the fire department, but also as a family that will always be there no matter where our lives take us or what we do. Uh, Buddy is very special to me. And I'd also like to ask you to recognize Buddy on, 7th, on uh, September the 8th in Maryland, Chief Martinet was honored with the Legacy Award presented by the National Fire Academy. We began this project 25 months ago in honor of the brave heroes of 9-11 and our heroes here in Wilmington. We have 11 internal firefighters and seven external fundraisers that made up the committee. And we are so thankful to you, the community, that have become involved and helped us with this project. We have 256 four by eight pavers sponsored. We have 42 eight by eight pavers inscribed. We have 81 eight by eight pavers with logos. We have in-kind donations consistent of our painting here tonight, the programs, pavers, uh, surveyors, the media, and so many more, totaling over 400 donors for this project. It took the firefighters seven days, working day and night, to get this site ready for the dedication. And we're also proud to say, Mr. Mayor, there is no tax dollars that is in this project. <laughs> and, and yes, we are close, but we're not there. But between Buddy and myself, I think we'll probably do a couple of more weeks of fundraising. <laughs> On September the 11th, 2001, I was in Washington, D.C. At the, at the Capitol. Congressman Mike McIntyre came in and asked us all to quietly leave the Capitol. We were escorted out. We got outside. There was no taxis. There were no people. There were no, there's nothing out there but dead silence. 
We didn't know how to get back to the hotel, and fortunately one person with us knew exactly how to go, and it was going to be about a three-mile hike. We walked about five steps, and we heard an explosion. And we turned around and saw the big blunt of smoke coming up when the plane hit the Pentagon. That is a day that I will never forget. Robert Athens wrote, so as you look at the firefighter with the rake, hose, and ax, his beet red face or covered mustache. You should know why he goes through the smoky front door and is forced to crawl like a baby down on the floor. He does it to save lives and our property and all that is precious to you and me. So take a good look at the modern warriors who serve to call proud and true and know that he would die just to save you and me. So the Wilmington firefighters, we salute you and thank you for your service and dedication to save others. And to this community, we thank you for making this dream a reality. And now I have the pleasure to introduce Mayor Bill Sappho. The Billy, uh, Mayor, if you want to come forward. The mayor is currently serving his third term and will begin his fourth term in January as long as he votes for himself in November. <laughs> in four terms, he will be known for the Convention Center, the Third Street Renovation, the Cross City Trails, the Riverwalk downtown, and that's just a few of the things that he's helped accomplish. He helped us raise money for this memorial. He made telephone calls and, vi and of corporate visits. He also sponsored a paver. He is dedicated to helping the firefighters in the city of Wilmington. He voted and attended the opening of this fire station this year. And today, he is here to help dedicate this monument. Your mayor, Bill Sappho. Thank you, Louise, and thank you, buddy, for everything you folks have done in championing this project through. I want to also thank all the firefighters that dedicated so much of their time and effort in making this a reality, all the donors, all the volunteers, everybody that's come together as a community to create this beautiful memorial for our city. I'd also like to thank the Wilmington Firefighters Foundation for everything that they have done. I know the foundation came together to make this happen, and the Firefighters Memorial belongs to the community and is something that everyone in Wilmington should be very, very proud of. I want to thank all of those whose efforts and visions to make this place of reflection and respect to the firefighters who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our city. And we are just steps, obviously, from the Cross City Trail and the MP Park Fire Station here. And this memorial will be viewed by thousands of people yearly as they pass by on the trail or they drive by here on Independence Boulevard or Park Avenue. And it is fitting that we dedicate this memorial on this day, September the 11th. Because it was on this day that we witnessed heroism and bravery that was unimaginable. It defined, I believe it truly defined what a public servant is all about. We must not forget that public service is a calling. Those who serve our public do it willingly. It's in their DNA. I've had the opportunity to go into a burning building with some of these folks, and I didn't like it very much. It was daggone hard work, and it was hot, and it scared the hell out of me. But it gave me a profound sense of honor to be with these guys, because I know what they do now day in and day out. But talking about the public servant, and how important they are to our community because they, all, they come in all walks of life. We must not forget that the school teacher who teaches our children and grandchildren is a public servant. The police officer puts on a bulletproof vest for the sheriff and, and a gun to protect our community is a public servant. The men and women of our armed forces who fight for our freedoms in far off places like the mountains of Afghanistan and Iraq are public servants. And the men who walked into those burning buildings on 9-11 when everyone else were walking out or running out are true public servants. God bless all those firefighters and God bless all those firefighters who gave their lives for our city and our community and those who continue to protect all of us here today. They are all 
true public servants. May God bless you. May God bless America. Thank you. Before I bring up our next speaker, I uh, uh, left out an individual. Chuck, please, will you stand up, please, Chuck? Chuck is the artist that uh, drew this portrait, that painted this, this portrait right here. And there's a little story that goes with it. Uh, me and the chief had had a conversation. Wouldn't it be great if we could get somebody to paint this memorial and then we could reproduce them and maybe sell them and help raise some funds? But we didn't have a clue who that would be. And then about a week later, Chuck walks in off of Market Street, and uh, we figured it was some more of our neighbors that wander in sometime. And uh, so the chief said, can I help you, sir? And he said, well, I'm not real sure why I'm here, but I feel like I need to paint a firefighter. And the chief said, I know exactly why you're here. Come on to my office. And this is what was produced from this. So, uh, Chuck, this is, his, this is Chuck's bio on the back. And these are for sale, framed, unframed, signed. We have several different versions. OK, thank you for letting me do that. The next speaker coming up here with a few brief comments is our chief of operations, Chief John Mason. When Chief Martinette asked me to speak today, I was very honored and, and grateful for the opportunity, yet I felt somewhat undeserving, because although I have contributed in several ways to this memorial, my contribution has paled in comparison to so many others. However, after I thought about it a little bit, I realized that all of us as firefighters should easily be able to come up here and talk about why this memorial is important. This memorial represents and is the result of so many things. Dedication, community support, respect, honor, and remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice serving their communities. From the early phases of development to the countless committee meetings, phone calls, and fundraising efforts, to the round-the-clock tireless labor of so many people over the last six or seven days to turn an idea a design concept, a dream, into a reality that exemplifies the dedication and commitment that the Wilmington Fire Department has made to honoring and remembering the fallen. This memorial represents what can be achieved through cooperation, the building of relationships, and community support. This memorial stands as a result of a tremendous outpouring of community support through monetary and in-kind donations of time, materials, and labor by citizens, local businesses, members of the emergency service agencies. Over the last week, members of local fire, EMS, and law enforcement agencies have worked alongside contractors together as one group towards a common goal. This memorial is about honor, sacrifice, and respect. But most importantly, this memorial is about remembering. Like most Americans, I can remember where I was, whom I was with, and what I was doing September 11, 2001. In fact, I was right here, watching the world change as the events of that fateful day unfolded. I remember vividly seeing the plane fly into the South Tower and leaping from my seat in sheer disbelief when it collapsed some 56 minutes later knowing that I had just witnessed hundreds, if not thousands, of people die, many of whom were emergency service workers, men and women who had gone into that tower to rescue those who were trapped, injured, and unable to escape. I remember in the weeks and the months, and even for a few years after the events of 9-11, seeing bumper stickers that read, God bless America, and never forget, there were signs and t-shirts and memorial events and fundraisers all to remember those who perished and the families that were left behind. As I ride around town, I occasionally see a faded bumper sticker. The edges are worn, 
perhaps a bit rolled up, slightly torn or cracked, but still legible. But I cannot help to ask myself, have we forgotten? Has complacency settled in? Is it just history at this point? Once a year, we pause to remember the loss our country has suffered as a result of the attack on our nation and our freedom. For a time after 9-11, our nation put aside politics and stood together united as Americans, proud and strong. But each year, the ceremonies seem smaller, less frequent, and attendance doesn't seem to be what it once was. In the 12 years that have passed since that beautiful yet tragic morning in 2001, our nation has endured a lot. Economic decline, recession, 10 years of war, millions of people out of work. The world is a much different place. The fire service too has been greatly affected by staffing and budget reductions, increased demands for service and political apathy. Perhaps these things have caused us to focus on other priorities. Have we forgotten? In July of 1999, I attended a class in Alabama at Fort McCullen on terrorism and the use of chemical weapons. In attendance were three members of FDNY. During class, a case study was done as part of the lesson on the World Trade Center bombings in 1993. These firefighters were able to provide firsthand accounts of their experiences on that day. Two years later, two of those firefighters again were called to respond to attack on the World Trade Center. This time, they did not come home. This memorial is about never forgetting the ultimate sacrifice made by those brave men. I remember sitting at a radio desk at the Riceville Beach Fire Department on a hot, August afternoon in 1987, listening to city fire units working on Market Street when a natural gas leak ignited and critically injured Assistant Chief Harold Sandlin. Chief Sandlin died as a result of the injuries he sustained 16 days later. I never had the pleasure of meeting Chief Sandlin or any of the other six men who lost their lives <clears throat> serving this city but I respect and honor their service. This memorial is about never forgetting the ultimate sacrifice that Assistant Chief William Monroe, Fire Chief Charles Schnibben, Lieutenant Raymond Corr, Lieutenant Emmett Williamson, Firefighter Oscar Willis, Captain Burley Scotton, and Assistant Chief Harold Sandlin made. This memorial is about vigilance. The bombings at the Boston Marathon, the deadly tornadoes in Oklahoma, and the hundreds of fires that continue to burn in the West that have destroyed homes, burned thousands of acres, and claimed the lives of 19 firefighters are tragic reminders of our need to remain vigilant and prepared. Each year, about 100 firefighters die in the line of duty. Every time the units from this firehouse leave and return from a run, every time someone passes by on the Cross City Trail, when people peer out of the windows of their vehicles while stopped at the traffic light, they will see this memorial and they will be reminded of the commitment to public service made by the men and women of the emergency services each and every day, and how sometimes they are called to make the ultimate sacrifice to protect the lives and property of their communities. To the members of the Wilmington Fire Department that are here today, I ask each one of you to take a good look at this memorial. There are seven of our brothers being honored here today. I never want to see another name added to this memorial. To all of my fire service brothers and sisters, I challenge each of you to honor the sacrifices of all who have died in the line of duty by never becoming complacent, never stop learning. Make every day a training day. Exercise regularly, wear your gear, wear your seat belt, take care of your brothers and sisters, love the job, and make a conscious commitment each and every day to go home to your family after every shift. 
If and when the day comes that you can no longer meet this challenge, that's when you'll know it's time to retire. Soon the aches and pains of those who have worked so hard over the last week will subside. The lines in the newly laid sod will grow together. The plantings will take root. In a few years, the concrete, stone, and bronze will begin to weather. Many years from now, the efforts of those who made this memorial possible will fade into distant memories, if they are even remembered at all. And each one of us here today will be long gone. But this memorial will still be standing strong, vigilant, forever honoring those who have fallen, never to be forgotten. Today, as we gather to dedicate this memorial, we can say that this community, this department has not forgotten. And we have respectfully honored those who have given their lives to serving others. Thank you.